ഗഗന സദൃശം തമസ്യാദിലക്ഷ്യം ഏകം നിത്യം വിമലമചലം സർവധീ സാക്ഷിഭൂതം ഭാവാതീതം ത്രിഗുണരഹിതം സദ്ഗുരും Good morning and a warm welcome to the last day of Biogen 2020. This series has been quite a journey through various fields and perspectives of surviving a pandemic. I'm pretty sure that we all have something to take away from this webinar series as we have been exposed to many and new interesting and amazing topics. I'll call upon Dr. Anisa PA, Assistant Professor, Department of Biosciences to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, honorable guest, Dr. V. Stalin Raj, Principal Dr. A. Suresh, Head of the Department, Mrs. Chidasha Balan, Coordinators and members of the Organizing Committee of Biogen 2020, and the most valuable delegates. Today is the fifth and last day of our international webinar series, Biogen 2020. Of course, it's an honor and pride for me to be asked to deliver a welcome address for this wonderful gathering. And moving on to my duty, The main agenda of the series is to enlighten and encourage the entire academic fraternity gathering at this virtual platform by exploring the skill and expertise of professionals from all corners of the world. Today we have an outstanding speaker Dr. V Stalin Raj from the Indian Institute of Science Education and Research ISA Trivandrum to share his knowledge on discovery and functional characterization of novel coronaviruses. Actually the topic of today's session is very much appreciated in the context that the whole world is under the threat of the mysterious illness of covid-19 the health professionals and scientific community narrates that much is still unknown about the virus causing the disease but a very strong submission is that the deep knowledge about these viruses will definitely help the scientists in developing antidote against such viral pathogens With extreme pleasure and honor I welcome today's speaker Dr V Stalin Raj to this webinar. I'm also delighted to welcome our all distinguished delegates including the scientists, academicians, young researchers and students from various institutions. On behalf of the organizing committee I extend a hearty welcome to one and all to this webinar. And finally I ensure that this webinar shall be worthy and the next few hours spared by you will be definitely informative and fruitful for each and every participants thank you and have a nice session ahead thank you ma'am dear participants kindly make sure that your microphone is muted and video is turned off during the time of presentation the link for the feedback form will be provided in the chat box after the talk Please ensure that it is filled and submitted before you leave the session. The feedback link is active only for 1 hour after the session. Today we are honored to have Dr. V Stalin Raj with us today to deliver a talk on discovery and functional characterization of novel coronavirus. I cordially invite Dr. Ranjisha Menon, Assistant Professor of the Department of Biosciences to introduce the resource person. Good thank you Ashley good morning one and all it's my pleasure to introduce our today's speaker Dr V Stalinger Dr Stalinger is one of the Indian microbiologist who working on vaccine development for corona viruses Dr Stalin achieved his doctoral degree from ICR Sibas Chennai after that he had pursued post doctoral work in University of Leeds Belgium Dr Stalinger works as associate professor in virology Institute of Science Education and Research Trivandrum from July 2017 onwards before that he worked as a scientist at Erasmus Medical Center Rotterdam Netherlands from 2010 to 2017 Dr Stalin has presented various talks at different nations on the aspect of the effect of different zoonotic viruses he is also associated with Institute of Advanced Virology Tonakel Trivandrum His area of interest includes both basic and applied research on the topic of emerging and re-emerging viral diseases in humans 
livestock and wildlife. To his credit, he has 69 publications in international journals, several book chapters, and filed a patent also. As per scholar metrics, Dr. Stalin has more than 6,000 citations. He is also the general referee for various high-impact journals such as Emerging Infectious Disease, Neural Surveillance, Journal of Virological Methods, Methodet, DMC Microbiology, etc. Today, Dr. Stalin Raj is here to give us a scholarly talk on discovery and functional characterization of novel coronaviruses. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. As you all know, the session begins with the presentation of the speaker, followed by a Q&A session at the end. Make sure to use the chat box facility to raise your queries, if any. The posted queries will be posed to the speaker at the end of the session. Kindly make sure that your audio is muted and video is turned off to avoid any technical disturbances. Dr. Stalin, now the desk is all yours. Okay, can you see my slides? Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for the nice uh, introduction. So um, um, I would, to, you know, I don't know how many of you are aware of me. So I was working on coronaviruses for, for the last 10 years. So, uh, so actually I joined at I said it the Brahm a couple of years ago. Still, I'm continuing to work on coronaviruses. So today I'm going to talk about a little bit about coronaviruses. So I will give you a brief introduction about emerging and re-emerging viral diseases and the history of known coronaviruses, including SARS, MERS, SARS-2 and what are the therapeutics and vaccines available for other viruses. So mainly I, I covered the things that I have done for the past 10 years, what I was doing. Just briefly, I will give all the details, okay? So this is the, the, the overall topic I'm going to cover now. So as you all are aware, I think you might have seen this picture, you know? This is a, is a global picture. Uh, the, can you hear me, yeah? Yes, sir, please put in slide mode, sir. No, it's okay? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so if you look at this, this is a global picture. I think you might have seen in the in the website, if you open it, emerging and re-emerging virus, you see this set of pictures. Actually, what I just put it there is the number of viruses, you know, reported in the globe, and that's what emerging viruses. Actually, I don't know, I think many of your students, I will tell, explain to you that so there are two terms often people using it, emerging and re-emerging. So what does it mean? It is the emerging viruses. So now emerging is very simple, okay? So previously unknown virus is, you know, unknown pathogen suddenly appear in a human population or animal population and cause disease to animals or humans. And this is a emerging viruses. Another term called re-emerging is a previously known virus that can, you know, come up and they cause some diseases, then disappear for quite some time, then again it will come up again in the next episode. That's a re-emerging, if you would ask me as a simple uh, explanation for that. The question is here, you know, we, we, we always talk about emerging and re-emerging. It's all new virus. If for one of the best examples, if I want to tell you that it's a COVID-19, you know, it's an emerging virus, it's a new virus. Where actually this virus coming from? You say new, no? You never seen it previously. It's suddenly coming up. Where is this coming from? This is an unanswered question, right? So the second question is, you know, we often see a dengue virus. It's coming up here in a few times. Then it is go up here. For example, 2017 in Kerala, we have a big outbreak of dengue. Then it disappeared for quite some time. We don't know when it is coming back. So the question is, you know, where it is actually this virus is, is stays now the, during this, you know, interval time, or is it, if it is a new virus, where it is coming from? I think you might have asked question the same. Actually, this none of these viruses are, you know, is an animal, is a human viruses. These are animal viruses. If you look at this picture, I put just in a, you know, animal picture, I put them so, uh, red red dot. This is equal to, you know, the viruses. So basically, these viruses are, you know, survive in the animal. For animal, these viruses are a common cell. Like in our endric, you know, endric tract, 
uh, what happened? There is a lot of bacteria is there, no? We, we never feel any, you know, we, 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 it doesn't cause a disease to or anything. It is common as all. Like that, viruses also, some of the viruses doesn't cause any disease to animal as well. They grow as like a normal. They happily grow, they replicate, they maintain in this animal. So it doesn't, because it doesn't cause any symptoms. It doesn't show any clinical symptoms or disease to these animals. Therefore, you may not notice it. If there is something, if you are sick, what you do, you know that is I am sick. If some, if you get a, some viral infection, you you may not notice it because if you don't have any symptoms, you never say it's a, it's a disease. Am I right? Similarly, the viruses also, so they happily grow in the animals or birds without showing any clinical symptoms. So when you have a close contact, either sneezing or other when you eat raw meat or very it's a slaughtering of animal or if you you know very close contact with other animals. This why animal viruses can cross the species barrier from one animal to other or animal to human. This is called zoonotic transmission. That means animal to human transmission. This virus doesn't mean it only jump to animal, but they can also jump to animal to human. They can also jump to animal to animal as well. But actually, some viruses, you know, once this virus jump, they can adapt it to the new host then they replicate very well in the new host, then cause a disease again. This is actually the basic principle behind this zoonotic viruses. So most, one example, if you want to ask, there are many examples I can say, tell you. There are one of the examples you know, HIV is the best example, it's a well-known example for um, zoonotic viruses. There are, there are many, SARS coronavirus, influenza virus, you know, uh, influenza virus, A, Nipah virus, West Nile virus, or, you know, crime in Congo, monkeypox, cowpox. So all these are not a human viruses. It's actually it's coming from animal source. Okay? So we also, swine flu, if you often, we, in India, we often see, you know, swine flu. It's, it's called in Malayalam, it's called Pandika Chalanwari. Okay? There is a swine flu. Okay? This actually is not a human virus. It's an animal virus. When you have a close contact, they can cause it. Actually, who will cause this? Most of these viruses are RNA viruses. Okay, viruses are classified into different types based on the genetic material and also architecture. There are either viruses have one type of genetic material, either RNA or DNA. Okay, there are more sub classification. I'm not going to talk about much. So mostly RNA viruses. The reason is RNA viruses. In, for example, in human, when you during their replication. Our polymerase, you know, they replicate very well. Then the polymerase have also proofreading activity. And also we have a machinery that can, re we have a repair mechanism. If there is any damage during the synthesis of DNA, so they can repair it. Whereas the viral RNA polymerase doesn't have a proofreading activity. That means during the synthesis, they make a lot of mistake. Okay. So that's the reason you have a lot of, you know, virus subspecies. They can easily adapt to that one species to another species. That's the reason RNA virus is the most prominent one that can cross the disease barrier from animal to human very easily. So if you ask RNA viruses, one or not? No, there are many RNA viruses. There is a deep, there are two, 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 around two, two, uh, 400 nanometer, more than 100 nanometer in size. And also, genome wise, have a, you know, 1.22, 32 kilobase per in size. That means 1 kb is equal to 1000 nucleotide. Okay? So, the structure wise, almost all the viruses are same. Actually, there will be a genetic material that means either RNA or DNA surrounded by a nucleic capsid protein or at the top there is a membrane protein is actually covered uh, the, the genetic material and the nucleic capsid protein and the top there is an, a protein called envelope protein okay so and the, and, and the top of this envelope there is a protein called envelope proteins this envelope proteins that's a, a called a, you know is a envelope glycoprotein this Actually, in this is a one of the protein will vary between viruses. You know, viruses. The term mostly is, is envelope protein, but the term will be very. Actually, if you talk about HIV, you need glycoprotein 120, glycoprotein 41. If you think of flavivirus, dengue or chikungunya, or they say they say envelope protein. If you go coronavirus, we say spike protein. 
okay only that is a different actually very simple architecture of this so in, in general if you think about the viruses so if you look at the virus because i'm because virus is a you know huge subject i don't i'm not talking about all the virus i'm quickly focus on rna viruses rna viruses the the replication cycle is actually you know the viruses first you know interact with the host cell receptor so then once they bind it they they go get into the cells but through the endocytosis that means there are two way they can go in either clathrin mediated endocytosis or calveolin mediated endocytosis so they make a vesicle then go in once they go in there is a only genetic material will be released out okay so the, the whole virus will not go in actually only the, the the genetic material will be open it and it is released inside the cell a cytoplasm okay what happen from there they make a two they, they they actually they produce a protein the make the protein because they the protein and also they make the own copy once they be they own copy the copy then finally they synthesize viruses back and release it okay so this is a very basic things to do so if we could think about corona viruses corona viruses also similar to the rna viruses the only is is a difference is is also enveloped viruses and has a enveloped glycoprotein on the surface only the term name is different is a corona virus because it has a crown like morphology when you look at the electron microscopy you see, you could see the structure like a crown like morphology that is the reason they said it corona viruses okay so if you look at the genome wise you know this virus is a corona virus is one of the virus has a large genome compared to all other rna viruses all for example dengue or other viruses they, they can be around 1.6 to 10 till kb average size will be 10 kb in in general but in the corona viruses have a large genome is around 32 kilobase pair in size so actually that is a quite large you know there is because because of that there is a complexity also quite a little higher and also if you look at that the the the, the and the surrounding but yeah, as i said this is such early almost they are uh, similar to other enveloped viruses only term i said you know there is a enveloped glycoprotein so this in the corona virus they be say they they called it spike glycoprotein is also glycoprotein is a is a called spike glycoprotein so why we are actually here after i will give more stress to the spike glycoprotein because this is a one of the important protein for any viruses Uh, you know the, because this is the first virus you no know, interact with the cell host receptors so initiate the infection they bind it then go in if there is a no receptor on the top there is a, there's a reason there is a infection on either lungs or nose you know the targeted no targeted uh, infection not everywhere otherwise it would have been infected you know they can infect on the skin and why it is not getting in, you know the virus get into all our uh, throat the body because the receptor is present on either respiratory tract or your lungs that is the reason you are getting lung infection or respiratory infection okay <clears throat> so genetically this is a quite complicated virus the large genome around 30 kb so around uh, and also a lot of uh, non structural protein that is have a proteases polymerases everything around 19 uh, actually 16 protein and also a lot of structural protein and other accessory protein this is quite complicated uh, the architecture if you genome organization compared to other organ other rna viruses so actually one of the point i want to incorporate to you here that's the reason i put this slides since it has a large genome size so for example if the in a cell you know i show i uh, previously i showed you a virus replication if Yes, cells infected with the two different types of virus. For example, one is let us assume that this is SARS coronavirus. Another one is this is SARS related virus, the same close related virus. If they infected in the same cells, what actually happen? No, they can able to recombine. They can exchange genetic material between these two. and two viruses so finally you can get a another another sub type of virus called called recombinant virus there is a possibilities because this is a large genome sense and also many of the part is more you know more closely related to other virus so there way therefore they can recombine and you can come with the another third version of the viruses okay so this is the one in the future talk about a genome a genome i want to tell you 
So because of this, you know, the 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 the, the uh, uh, large genome, and they have a uh, RNA virus. This is a, one of the virus, you know, have a unique property than other viruses. For example, HIV will be infect human or my, you know, you can monkey, uh, but this coronavirus has infect different types of animals. It's a large, you know, they have a wide range of host tropism. They can they can infect a human, animals, birds, or rodents, or reptiles. You can find coronaviruses everywhere in every animal species. Okay? So based on that, the viruses are classified into four different alpha, beta, gamma, or delta, or group one, two, three, four. You might have seen this in the nowadays in the paper. Actually, the four. Actually, one of the things I want to bring it here again. So I think if you know, I think anybody from India, I think, you know coronaviruses only 2010 only. Actually, the first coronavirus was first discovered in, in 1930. The virus called IBV, infectious bronchitis virus, actually is not a human virus. So it is a, it's an avian virus, actually, it's, you know, chicken virus. Okay, I think you might have seen somewhere else. You have a backyard. You have a chicken. Sometimes no. Sometimes they are also you know they they, they lazy birds. You know sleepy and they, they have sometimes they have a breathing problem also. That is caused by IBV. One of the organism. One of the organism. IBV infectious bronchitis virus. This was actually identified in 1930. So for us to know that it took around 80, 90 years, you know, to 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 know to to know about coronaviruses. So why I am telling this because I, I I joined here in 2017 and I went to many meetings. I give a presentation in foreign coronaviruses. Uh, so nobody aware of coronavirus and nobody interested in also coronaviruses. So that's the reason I said it. So actually, 1967, the first human coronavirus, 229E, was identified. Later in 2003, then later several coronaviruses, human and animal, they identified. It's one of the blue dot here I mentioned, these are human coronavirus. I'm going to talk in a few minutes later. So actually, until, actually, until 2003, eh? until 2003, nobody knows coronavirus cause serious disease. Before that, what they know, Coronavirus can, can cause disease to human, but you will get a you know, mild disease. For example, you also getting nowadays, you everybody getting some common flu and all, you will get one day, you are just to sneeze it, then after that you forget it, am I right? So you always do that. You just you do that, then you will never consider it as a you know, disease. Actually, the, 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 the corona, human coronaviruses, actually they doesn't cause any serious disease to human at all. They just come in, maybe you notice it or you may not notice it. For example, one, one example, if I said it, one of the coronavirus called OC43. I think you never aware of OC43 until now. If I look at your blood, if I test them, you have an antibody against OC43. Okay? So I think many of them might have got it to OC43. It's a, it's a bovine virus. It's usually coming from bovine. And they, they, you actually, that doesn't, you should, in general, coronavirus doesn't cause any serious disease to human. That's what the main message over here. So actually, this was the belief you know, until 2003. Actually, 2003, there was a news from, you know, in the WHO give you a news, actually. Actually, there is a, there is a, a you know, the, there is a something, there is a new outbreak is going on in China. Uh, it is basically when the, the patient got infected with such a kind of infection, they, 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 if you treat them with the antibiotic or uh, any treatment, they doesn't protect. They have also diarrhea, high fever, but they were very rapidly spreading one animal, one human to another human. So this is something contagious virus. Okay, and also they very rapidly also spreading one person. Human is not only in China; it's also spread globally. There's a news came in. Then it was a surprise. No, something's outbreak going on. For us, like like a researcher like us. So since we you know we were I'm working on emerging viruses. There is an outbreak. What immediately we want to find out what could be the cause of this organisms, why it is, you know, heavy, because we never seen such kind of symptoms or disease before, suddenly it's appear, then what happening at this moment, then there is a, you know, Hong Kong Center for Disease Control, and uh, there are other scientists from Hong Kong universities. They identified, there is a, uh, you know, they grow the virus, then they found out that it's a coronavirus. It was really surprising, because, 
previously no, no, never seen any you know, corona virus cause any endemic or epidemic or uh, so far suddenly it appeared they were everybody shocked what is the corona virus is it really true so if it is then sir then they, they communicate with actually who and many other scientists they try they, they ask questions where is this virus coming from actually uh so actually the virus they identified within few weeks they identified and they sequenced the genome they published the the the, the, the virus in you know the, the the genome characterization in in, in a two you know repeated journal called new england journal of medicine actually the one of the interesting part the virus they identified actually here is a is a blue box or a green arrow mark here here you see this all known coronaviruses here this virus is something different we never seen this virus before previously it is a too far away from uh, i know the previously known so i don't know i will briefly explain this also now this is a phylogenetic tree if you I, if you want to identify the relation between the one 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 uh, organism to the other we sequence the genome we can make a phylogenetic analysis we can identify the close relatives who is more close to for example for me and my my father my grandfather if we take a genetic material if you analyze them or and also a control from some other family you can identify who is belonging to what who is more close to each other okay there's a way uh, genetically we can identify the close relatives by uh, the phylogenetic sequencing and the phylogenetic analysis this is the way they did it So then they identify this is a new coronavirus. The question immediately asked the scientists: Actually, where is it coming from? Because in China, you know, if we would have an outbreak or you know, then we might have noticed it in previous. But that doesn't happen actually. It is suddenly is coming. That means something is coming from. Actually, uh, we you know the coronavirus research group or uh, know that many of these coronaviruses are from uh, the animal source. one of the thing the hypothesis this could be uh, coming from a, a, a animal because you know china i don't know how many of you are aware of the chinese live market the chinese live market is a, is a live animal this is a live market that doesn't mean it only live they also see dead also this is the animal you see this are all pet, not a pet animal okay this are all for slaughtering and this for a food of you know this is you can is this a civet cat you know rabbit you know insect you know the turtle Uh, and you can see dogs and reptiles everything you can see in the live market i have been there so i know that i i have visited market also if you don't believe you see this is also i, I download from them uh, in the in the in the, in the, in the website this is one of the menu menu card from the the uh, menu card from the hotel you see everything is available actually this on the right side this is something missing okay so it's actually menu card This is the one you see. Bat is a, is a bat belly soup actually. The it is a bat. Uh, you know, inside you can see there is a soup. People is delicious food for them. They make it and you know the belly and they is a uh, they make a soup and they drink it. Actually, it's a delicious food for them. They usually they drink during the uh, in the in the in the Christmas time. So could be. Uh, you know the scientists believe that the virus might have coming from one of the animal they actually cull samples from all these uh, animals uh, from this market and they, they tested interestingly they found a virus from a civet civet cat actually the virus is more close to them actually here you see the virus they identified from uh, a human and this is a human but it's a it's human but close relative virus you can see here are is from uh, this is a civet civet cat actually this is a virus identified from civet he is a human virus so more close huh? more close to the all other known viruses this they, they, and also some of the animal have an antibody against this particular virus based on that they could able to conclude that the virus is coming from this animal so actually how it is coming it is a, if you if you think about the biological uh, biology of the virus as i mentioned to you is a receptor is one of the major factors coronavirus you know many of them is found in bats bats is a reservoir for many many coronaviruses actually what happened this particular virus ace2 angio converting enzyme 2 as a end receptor for this virus should this virus you know you know jump from bat to civet cat by adopting their genetic material change their receptor binding site 
they adopted to actually well adopted to this case is the civet cat the civet adopted strain jump from human to uh, the civet to human so actually the human virus still grow in the civet cat whereas the civet cat adopted virus doesn't grow any any more in fact actually we this is this discovery has been done in 2013 i think so actually this is a 10 years later they identify the prototype of sars cov from that issue okay so the basic concept of receptor i mean it's a major factor the virus is you know this is you know, one of the major factors is receptor this virus jump from animal to humans if you talk about the original story i told all the way because due to the lack of time i made it a short actually here the original story was like this one of see this is the backyard of a restaurant of you know one of the chinese restaurant there is a lot of animals here no these animals not for growing okay this is sir a backyard uh, the hotel then people you know you can select animal in the chicken sub you know so why you need a 1 kg of chicken or 2 kg of live then also you can check a duck and dog or civet cat or anything you can choose the live animal one of the chef from the hotel he selected the animal from the, the you know um, and the, um, you know from selected animal then he he slaughtered the animals he, i think he got the infection from them then later on he transmitted to one person to another it then spread within uh, you know within few months around more than 8000 people have been uh, infected by this virus about 10% of the infected people have been died by this virus so one of the good thing was the who gave a global alert on march 12th then within few months they could able to contain the virus outbreak actually they could able to control the outbreak uh, and they can manage it so how they could able to control actually you know any outbreaks any any virus outbreak If this is this for example i could say m m is is a index case for example first case who receive the virus the person can the virus can transmit to one person to another another they can pass it actually one to two two to four like that they can transmit actually the one best example is the current outbreak of um, uh, sars cov um, here the cell one to two the actually the virus once it is transmit to one person to the second person if you identify the initial contact tracing and we identify if you quarantine them you can also control them okay but the problem is once you spread and if you reach the community level it's very very difficult actually what they did in china china did shut down all the close mar- close shut down all the market live market clean every all the market and also they closed down all the live market and killed all the civet cat it is therefore they could able to you know the control the outbreak within 3 months uh, within within the 6 months of outbreak meantime there are scientists developed several therapeutics therapeutics means they and also interferon and other stuff because there is a new virus outbreak now and several groups around the world a research group developed vaccines as well the within different platform each group have their own platform like currently they are were developing the several groups you are seeing no newspaper we are developing vaccine vaccine so like that there are several groups that developed vaccines but then it is see here the day the day i developed the vaccine late december 2004 but actually day late 2005 2005 2004 but meantime once they developed the vaccines they nobody want to do buy the vaccine because there is no more outbreak no the virus there is no more outbreak but you know so 2003 itself the virus outbreak has been controlled so there is no more cases after the uh, july uh, for example third there is no outbreak anymore no sars in in china okay so and during this time after that there is then that this time i was also working on corona i was tracing back animals you no know, viruses from different animals so you know, i was also involved in the virus discovery work i was, so uh, we are tracing back uh, viruses from different animal bat you know reptiles and the animals we discovered many many new viruses including i uh, identified a novel corona virus this species is is bat and also from uh 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 from uh, the ferret this animals and it's like that we discovered many many new viruses so question you know during that time there is exactly 10 years later of to the sars outbreak so there is a news is came from you know saudi arabia this time 
there is a 160 years old man was admitted in hospital he had a pneumonia you see this is a he has a x ray you see here he has a pneumonia and also he had a breathing problem and uh, doctors also treated him uh, by antibiotic he failed for you know the antibiotic you know the treatment the antibiotic doesn't help for him but he had also kidney failure and other diseases finally he died within you know with within few days after the infections so one of the scientists from there called Saki he took the samples and uh, tested for all known viruses is negative for all known viruses then he actually he sent the sample to our department where i was working at erasmus medical center what we did we did, we did the, the the chest we test the samples and we found you know the is a small fragment around 400 base pair we amplified it from the the sample we in our we you know based on our primers there is a 400 base pair picked uh, you know that pcr is giving a positive signal when you sequence them that virus is more close to a bad coronavirus it was really surprising when you do that you know this is a sars coronavirus outbreak in 2003 then also we sequenced the complete genome within few days actually we had a next generation sequencing in our department we sequenced them we assembled the genome within few weeks and we found this virus is again more close to a yeah, bad coronavirus rather than a yeah, 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 coronavirus identified previously so not related to sars coronavirus so it was surprising at that time there was a one case in saudi arabia later actually during this time there is a one more case uh, who traveled to saudi arabia and that second case is in from uk so only two cases so one of the thing was what was surprising for us yeah something new virus it's a new genetic material genetically is a divergent is so far away from all known other viruses again so then we what we did it now we know the sars corona virus it doesn't grow in bat so what it become a bunch of cells from from the collaboration with the germany what we did is then you grow the cell viruses in the in the in the in the, the sars corona virus you know grow them at bat cells they doesn't grow there is the new virus what we identified that called in now earlier it was human coronavirus eras emc now human mers coronavirus middle east respiratory syndrome coronavirus okay and then ict we renamed the virus now all know us i will tell mers cov okay when the mers cov grow very well in bat cells different bat cells so what we found interesting this is something different than the known virus is a new is a phenotype for example even if it's sars corona virus if you uh, transfect the human uh, or uh, uh, human uh, a is to is a receptor then the cells become susceptible actually so what we could able to conclude that the two three thing this is a new virus one second thing is this is a new phenotype this is something different from the sars corona virus so obviously we ask the same question because immediately we know it's a novel corona virus from human so remains the same question what we asked the sars whether this virus originally coming from bat or they using the same receptor as a sars or they they coming from any intermediate host still they if there is an intermediate host they using the the same receptor as like a sars or the human is the vice versa we asked the same question nothing different so one of the questions why i asked you why i told you the receptor is the one of the major component because so if you identify the receptor you can intervene you can also you can you can block the interaction of virus versus between virus and the host okay so either by antibiotic or you can develop therapeutics you can in block the interaction that is a very good to, to, to do that you can you do with a monoclonal antibody you can develop a polyclonal whatever is or you can develop drug that's the one of the things that what we that we can do why can't we identify the receptor for that virus so before that you know any new virus what is the major component we need in diagnostics not all diagnostic meaning that not meaning like uh, the 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 uh, the just rt pcr no we need a different various type of diagnostics what we did it we could develop various diagnostics elisas that detect virus specific antibodies microarray to detect antibodies virus neutralization assays epitope mapping and also we did the sandvis elisa and also we also study structural analysis so on we developed various array of assays 
that's very very essential but still lack for novel coronavirus you remember that okay so only we know that is a strip based diagnostic and also one other thing one another is a rt pcr but that doesn't that basically that's not sufficient uh, for uh, to 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 evaluate or diagnostic yeah, diagnose yeah, exact organisms okay so we first we develop because any research or even it is not only research also if you want to screen people we need a diagnostic we develop a diagnostics the second question is we ask what type of receptor they use it what we did it now we clone the spike protein i said in a spike is is one of the major protein this is a is a protein that is interact with the cell surface receptor actually what we did we clone this human the protein fused with the human immunoglobulin fc actually nothing fc means is a immunoglobulin what will happen they make a dimer you know that's the purpose the purpose is with the cloning is we use them it is to make the dimeric protein and also you can you can is easily purifiable you can purify the protein very easily so we we clone them and produce the dimeric protein so this when we mix this protein recombinant protein with the cell lysate so we pull did the pull down assay like this uh, you see here yeah pull down assay actually what interesting and happen no around 130 kilo dalton protein was co purified uh, along uh, along with the, the spike protein when you do a mass spec mass spectrophotometry we found it dipeptidyl peptidase 4 actually again it was really a surprise for us so so far nobody shown dpp4 as a receptor for any known viruses So how can you prove that? So we did a lot of experiments to prove that this is a receptor for this virus. So I'm not due to the time. I'm not going to talk much about it. We prove that this is a DPP4 as a functional receptor for us. If you want to ask you, you browse it. DPP4 is is a play major role role in type 2 diabetics. And also T cell activator. There are multiple function for this protein. Okay. So what he proved here is we identified is a DPP4 as a end receptor. and the second important point we could able to prove that that the transmission of the virus factually we could say that this virus doesn't transmit much efficient less efficient than the other known coronavirus other is like a sars for example the reason is very simple this is a picture you see here no the red is a dpp4 is a receptor of mers the the green is a tubulin is a cilia you can see cilia so this is actually your lung tissue our lung human lung tissue is stained with the dpp4 and tumulin so what we found interesting here is non ciliated cells non ciliated means is a, is a non ciliated cells expressing the dpp4 receptor of mass maybe again this give you a clue that you know the, this virus doesn't transmit very efficient because no i know in, in our respiratory system we have two things one is upper respiratory tract and then lower respiratory tract upper respiratory tract is you know we have a lot of ciliated cells what you see here no this more abundant in upper respiratory tract in the lower respiratory tract more abundant in low, lower respiratory tract non you know so our receptor is expressing the lower respiratory tract if you compare to sars sars ac2 angio converting enzyme 2 expresses on the ciliated cell that could be a very clear you know in actually so it's, it's really a contrast to, to between these two and also the this this virus cannot transmit very efficiently between human and we could prove that compared to sars sars they replicate very well in upper respiratory tract they can also transmit very efficiently the third thing we can also able to prove that this this the virus you know use the same receptor dpp4 i uh, of bat as a end receptor for that so could be bat could be the origin of this virus that these are the three could able to be prove that for the coronavirus later so i see ask you know do we want to trace back the virus where this virus coming from we know that coronavirus is all originally from you know the animal source we trace back all these animals we collect samples from different animals we tested antibody against this virus first we found it antibody against this virus this this what it was a really a surprising story again during that study and we found a camel 
So later we isolate live virus from the nose swabs or from the camel, especially young camel have a high level of uh, viruses in the, in the, in the young camel. So later we try to screen uh, you know, animals, camel from different part of the world. Uh, what we know now is Australia and American camels are negative for COVID antibodies or COVID, so whereas all other countries I think, including India, my paper, uh, we did some work on India, but that we could not, I think we could not publish it yet. So uh, we have a data on it. So I think everywhere there are you know, COVID antibodies present uh, other than the, uh, I think uh, now we conclude that camel will be the intermediate host for this virus. Could, could be a bad to serve original host for virus, but still to date, no prototype of corona mers like virus from bat have been identified yet. So later, one of the important points for any virus is what you need it, animal model. Animal model means, if you, you know, if you develop vaccine or therapy, you cannot test them in human. Okay, you, see, you cannot test them in animals. This is very complicated. No? You, how can you test them? It's not allowed to test them. So one of the things is you need an animal that is susceptible for the particular pathogen. Then, more, not only path infected, and also they could generate the similar kind of clinical symptoms what you see in humans. Actually, that is a, you need to have the animal model. So what we did, you know, is again, selecting animal model, you cannot randomly, you know, new virus, you cannot select, randomly pick animals, you cannot test them. So what we did, them, we, 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 here you see them, no? Lot of animals, uh, green, these are the animals we tested for the, the, the SARS-CoV, MERS-CoV infection in vitro. And these are the green ones are susceptible for the virus infection, whereas this one, uh, this all, uh, the red one we already tested, these are non-tested, these are not susceptible for the virus. We are now we know that, you know, none of the animals showing clinical symptoms like as like a human uh, infection. A rabbit could be them, uh, one of the model, but you know, virus replicate very well, but that's a, not his, his symptoms like a human. And also marmoset is a small, like a monkey, like a small size. This also having a mortality is there, but you know, symptoms why is very not like us, like a human. So anyway, of course, we develop animal model. Later on, we tested vaccine for this virus. We developed several types of vaccine, vector-based vaccines, subunit vaccines, and also uh, the nanoparticle vaccines. So I'm going to briefly explain one of the vaccines we did, you know, adenovirus-based vaccine or MVA, modified vaccine virus. It's very simple. That I told you, you know, so spike protein of this, um, the coronavirus, we cloned them in the backbone of adenovirus. Adenovirus are glass 2 viruses. You can routinely, you know, handle in the routine laboratory. And also some of the important genes we deleted out. So the virus cannot replicate very well like the other one, but a single round of replication. Once they go in, they replicate it, they, could, they can produce a protein, but they cannot make an infectious virus particles. Similarly, same thing, there are two systems. One is adenovirus, and also we use the MVA, modified vaccinia virus, that also we made the similar cons construct. And make, once you make this one, we immunize them in a mice. Once you immunize the mice, what we found very interesting is that the, 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 you know, either complete spike protein is you know, induced or if you do the small fragment of spike, that can also induce you know, high level of immunogenicity and uh, they, this is a neutralization titer. They, they actually, the high level of neutralizing antibodies in both the complete spike or some S1 domain, you see high level of neutralizing antibodies. So this candidate can be used as a vaccine for uh, for MERS coronavirus. The question is where to immunize them, you know? <laughs> vaccine developed, how are you going to test them? How to prove? I said to you, we don't have proper animals. One thing we know that, you know, camel, we found it camel, young camel have a shedding a high level of animal, uh, viruses. Actually, the concept is, if you, if you immunize the camel, if you prevent the spread of virus between the camel to camel, ultimately you can block the virus infection, okay? That is the idea. So therefore, we want to immunize them in, in camel. We import camel from Canary Island, you know, it's one of the uh, part of the small island from, you know, just far away from Spain. So import animals. We did the experiment in the BSL-3 facility in Spain, Barcelona. So actually what we found now, uh, when you, this is a PBS. PBS, I mean, just a PBS uh, challenge. This, this is a vaccinated animal, we MVA vaccinated, and another one is PBS vaccinated. So if you vaccinate, our MVA vaccinated animal, 
if you after uh, you know after uh, you know boost vaccination if we challenge with the high dose of infectious virus you know see no it doesn't see any clinical symptoms clinical symptoms whereas the 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 coronavirus here is you know the control we give your clinical symptoms okay if we take out the swabs and we titrate the virus we could see vaccinated animal have a doesn't have much infectious virus whereas we have a control animal have a high level of infectious virus and also we prove that you know this is a nosal turbinate of camel camel are big nosal nosal region this is a institute gabbardization you see the viral rna staining very few cells stained for the viral you know when the vaccinated animal knows whereas you know this control animal you know challenge animal have a you know you see high level of viral rna here is you know so this is uh, is exactly show that this vaccine is clearly protect one of the thing is you know another thing i'm going to not a vaccine story is all the big story i'm not make it short now actually this vaccine can be now is under clinical trial at this moment in humans so it took it you know 2012 you think about it is around 8 years now um, so uh, yeah it is now in the human first phase one clinical trial so second thing one of the important point is what we noticed because we are i told you earlier we were screening all the camels we testing for camel antibodies what we found very very interesting so camel have a high level of antibodies so when you compare because i didn't put the picture over here when you human the here you see one microliter of uh, sera if you take them dilute them 62 times some, um, some of them you have a 70000 times if you dilute them still that that sera have a capable of nucleasing capacity whereas if you human if you take if you dilute the maximum you can dilute 320 so then we have a questions why human camel antibody have a high level of nucleasing antibody high level of nucleasing capacity you know compared to human is very very high if you take one microliter if you think about 70000 times if you dilute it oh, it's a huge so uh, then the high level of nucleosing capacity we ask question why it is happening like that so we come to that hypothesis because maybe this camel you know keep on getting you know the infection with the virus that's the reason to keep on boosting it maybe high titer so second hypothesis also you know we come to that you know i don't know how many of you are aware of it camel have a unique type of antibodies you know so camel have a conventional antibody that we have it igg and also they have a heavy chain only antibodies heavy chain means the antibody have a fab region only heavy chain the light chain is absent in the igg2 antigg this is a unique only is in nature in the heavy chain antibody present only in two species one in camel another one is shark okay this is called a single chain the another advantage is you now if you clone this protein you can produce a recombinant protein is act as antibody you can produce in any environment you can boil it you can do it whatever you want you can put the acid still the protein is very stable okay the size is very small around 16 kilo dalton that's the reason they called nanobody okay so that's a very is a, is a, and another reason if a human antibody they can bind it like this you know but this a single chain antibody they can even go to the even cavity of the antibody, antigen they can you know interact with them so that's another advantage for this one the our question is whether camel have this type of antibody whether we can produce the camel mers cov specific antibody from camel of course yes what we did i developed a new method if you want it you can check my paper so i have we i developed a new approach for the identification of camel specific antibody uh, mers cov specific antibody from camel so what we found it very interestingly four antibody i have i have around 26 antibodies can able to neutralize but four antibodies are high with high nanomolar you know very highly potent antibody is you see where picomolar concentration they can do the neutralization very interesting the problem is if you use this antibody if you use that you cannot use as a therapeutic so one of the disadvantage because when you inject them in your body what will happen kidney you go to the clear from you know and they they could because of since the cysteine may and the kilo dalton we clear within few minutes or few hours so what we did is we make them chimeric antibody we put them human antibody take out the heavy chain and you know they they, they off this nano body clone with a human uh, immunoglobulin uh, you know uh, then the, the fc region if we made them finally human camel chimeric antibody if you do this make this antibody even more potent than the single chain and the nanobody alone 
So it is very, very interesting when you did the, we prove that this antibody, even test them in mice. If you treat the mice with the, 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 the antibody, it six hours before uh, challenge, we immunize, we challenge, you know, six hours before the challenge, we inject them 200 microgram of the protein. Then if we challenge them, there's a no virus found in this virus, in, in this animal. So there the virus, animal was healthy, whereas the infected animals completely, you know, the control animal, all of them died. So that way, that now at least this is, can be one of the things. This nanobody can be a chimeric antibody can be used as a therapeutic, uh, and uh, you know you can use as a you know in the hospital setting. You know in an emergency case, you know people most of the clinicians get get the infection. You can use as an as a use as a prophylactic treatment. So now we also, of course, I'm going to stop this for this point. So I'm, we also developed a, a monoclonal antibody, human monoclonal antibody that also we developed that is a high potent antibody. That also one of them is cross react. Uh, no, so that mm, there, and now we are also in the uh, in the, in the uh, testing small animal and big animal models. So the problem in this MERS, the outbreak, I told you SARS stopped MERS, the outbreak still ongoing. Every week you see some outbreak we cannot control because uh, there you can kill the civet cat, here you cannot kill the civet cat. Okay, so still the outbreak is going on. So, meantime, in 2019, end of 2019, there is a new outbreak came in China. I think you all are aware of it. It's a new virus, it's called, you know, it's called Wuhan, it's a virus coming from Wuhan. Then they said it, the virus, they said it is a corona, it's the coronavirus caused this disease. Uh, and this virus is actually, is, a, is a different than the virus they identified earlier. It's a human virus. This virus is here, SARS coronavirus, MERS coronavirus is here. This new virus is, so it's a here, it's a more close to bad coronaviruses here. Okay, it's a different types again. Also new viruses appear, but this time, the virus, I said you all, other the SARS also is transmitted between human very efficiently, but they could be able to control between within six months of time. But if you look at this picture, I took them, this is, I keep it there because everywhere, whenever I give a presentation, I take a snapshot. This virus, you know, if you do them, March, February 22, you see, only 2,400 deaths, around 78,000 people have been infected, around 18 to 20 countries. In the time, only India, we have only in one cases, that is also from Kerala. So no other cases. But if you look at the, uh, look at the June uh, cases, you can see nine crore, uh, nine. So you see, Oh, um, 5,000 people have been died. In, in India alone, we can see 16,000 people already died in June. If you look at, but the viruses, you know, spread very rapidly. When you compare to other viruses, any other viruses than, I think previously, 19, 1918 to 1922, there is a Spanish flu. That was the one caused the pandemic. After that, this is the, First virus again, they're causing this is the first coronavirus even causing pandemic. The virus also very evolving very rapidly also because you know this is another problem. If the virus evolves, we, we need to do uh, making therapeutics also problem. Okay, vaccines or anything. And another issue is I told you this virus can infect animals. They can if there is a virus in animal, they can also combine, recombine it, come back again within another version of virus. There's also possibilities. Okay, so these all factors. But still, the question is where this virus coming from. We nobody knows. Actually, the same question is SARS. Only thing is they know that the bat H2, the virus, if you, you know grow using the bat H2 to entry. Another one in important thing is pangolin. You know, or is ant eaters. This they find out more close relatives of virus from ant eaters. You can see your pangolin virus. It is a more close related to virus. People believe that it's a virus coming from anteaters. Okay, but still don't know all the details yet. The problem is, only thing is the, 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 the SARS coronavirus, you will be even, you know, controlled within, within six, six months and uh, they will be able to uh, control the virus. Whereas, you know, now the number of cases is very, very high. Now more than nine, five, nine lakh people, 9.5 lakh people have been died with this virus infection. This is compared to 
all other viruses, you know, in this, this, this period, this is a, one of the pandemic viruses. We never expected a coronavirus that can cause a pandemic. Of course, this virus, you know, something different than previous is this virus is transmitted through aerosol. You know, if you sneeze, we can also can call, transmit to the, 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 they can also sometimes cause a diarrhea. And also, you know, talking to one person, if you are more close to this infected people, you're getting infection, they can transmit very efficiently. The problem now, we, we, we lost already that this, the virus, we need to control this stage. Now they reach the community level. That once the virus has reached the community level, the width is asymptomatic. The problem, main problem is asymptomatic. If you have a symptomatic, you know that virus is, you have some symptoms, then you can quarantine. If somebody has carried the virus as a asymptomatic, it's very difficult to identify them. Who transmitted you? Who got the infection from? To whom? To who? Got it? We don't know. That's a major problem. Second problem is this virus, maybe you may not be a, uh, you may be a carrier, you got the asymptomatic, you go to outside in the shop, then you have a virus, you met with, you go back to your home, you, are, you talk to your grandpa, grandpa have a comorbidity like kidney diseases or other heart diseases or some other immune suppression. He may be the susceptible for the virus infection, but still the problem is nobody knows where you got it. Maybe you, they got it from you, but you know, nobody knows it where the virus coming from. That is a major problem now. Okay, symptomatic, no problem. You can identify, have a symptoms, you can quarantine, but in, in on a year, symptomatic is very difficult. So, of course, control, this is a year control, we lost it. The control is early detection and any virus outbreak, early tracing and early quarantine infected patient. That is the best source. And we now we have to wear a mask. Now, only choice is we have to, everybody has to wear a hygiene and wearing a mask. Now, because we just reached a community level, this is uh, I, at this moment is very difficult. Only we need to protect ourselves and to be uh, be safe. Okay, isolation and quarantine. So one of the questions, you know, many people also ask because this question, we also have a lot of animals, a lot of things, and why we are not getting. So the very good example, I will say, wherever we have, you know, people have a close contact with the animal, there is a more prone to have outbreak over there. Best example is MERS coronavirus. If you think about it, it's the Middle East, people who are more close to contact with the animal, they treat it as a pet animal. And also Ebola outbreak in, in, in West Africa, they use, they use a, um, a bush meat, Regularly, they will not hygienic. They will use a bush meat. So, and also, you know, one other nip outbreak. Um, we had a very accidentally happen a, a nip outbreak in in in, 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 in Kerala, but more frequently happening in uh, in the here Malaysia because you know bat carry the virus. They drink palm sap. So during the, you know they drinking palm sap, they urinate on the palm sap. So people drink it. They got the infection from the palm sap. And also China, they have people have a more close contact with the animals. The question is, the, the, the thing is, wherever you have a very close contact with the animal, that's a more prone to hit the, uh, the, uh, the getting zoonotic viruses is high. The probability is very high. But doesn't mean it that we are not getting it, but so probability is very high. But if you look at the data, you see that most of the places there, they have a very close contact with the animal, there they have animal outbreak. So another problem, why we have about this, worried about emerging viruses, actually, it's a huge economic loss. Eh? Everybody, we think about no airport, no market, complete shutdown, no company, nothing. Everything is lost. It's a huge economic loss. These slides, I always put it even not in now, earlier also. If nobody will realize, actually, now you might have realized it. It's actually, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge economic loss. Okay, that's the reason everybody is worried about uh, emerging viruses. So I will, I will come back to the, I'm going to stop it in a in few more slides. So I want to explain you know, what currently I'm doing it. So I want to, uh, so still I'm working on coronaviruses and also a little bit of private viruses. We are also developing diagnostics and serological assays and vaccines. And also we are understanding how viruses attach and go into the human cells. That's we are basic research. And also we are working on virus discovery. So one of the, the problem in India, so, you know, the limitation, maybe my, I think many of you are interested in even the maybe the audience who are in here, you are also interested in coronavirus. But you cannot, you, even if you want to work on coronavirus, you cannot do it because we don't have a facility for why in anywhere in India. Actually, you can count the number of 
the these viruses are highly pathogenic we need a high containment facility to work with these viruses even we nobody have this such a kind of facility even i don't have it here i have bsl2 plus laboratory we cannot do it so only then then to overcome this issue what we decided to do we can make a pseudo typed virus pseudo typed virus is nothing actually is a vsv is a vesicular stomatitis virus is a bsl2 virus normal virus so this virus what we do we remove the surface glycoprotein and replace with the protein of our interest okay we make them is a pseudo type this virus also mimic like a live a live virus only but these are replication incompetent they cannot grow we we or the we remove all the vsg protein and replace with the a, a reporter we have a luciferase and also glt we made we made a, a, like a pseudo typed viruses for um, viruses for many other viruses not only for sars we developed viruses for sars mers and also sars cov2 to to understand the entry mechanism neutralization assays and all one of the example i said it we this is a virus we developed sars covid pseudo virus sars2 sars cov mers cov uh, also vsv you see then when you infect them you see them you know the gfp positive cells we can able to titrate them you can also see here when you look at the electron microscopy we could see the viral particles so using this we could able to prove that this virus go you you know because pseudo type of virus is you know you are using as a surrogate actually you are using a you know backbone of some other virus you putting then how do you how sure your virus is enter through the cells through the receptor mediated endocytosis we have proved that if you incubate the cells with antibodies okay what will happen they can also block the sars cov antibody sars cov specific antibody can block neutralize sars cov and sars cov 2 actually sars cov antibody can cross neutralize the sars cov they inhibit the virus entry moreover we could say but not mers corona virus pseudo typed but if you do the mers cov specific antibody they can also neutralize mers cov pseudo typed virus but not other two viruses sars or sars 2 in addition to this <clears throat> we can also produce recombinant receptor protein sorry <clears throat> sorry once recombinant receptor <clears throat> spike protein uh, receptor protein if we incubate the pseudo typed sars corona virus see here they can neutralize actually block the entry of the sars cov and sars cov2 but not for mers but when you incubate them you know <clears throat> when you here if you do the human dpp4 then the virus will be oh sorry so it is soluble as to but if you over express this human dpp4 or ac2 ac2 is a receptor for sars cov and sars cov2 on the cells you see if you were sars and sars cov2 can enter using through human ac none of the other virus grow in that cells whereas if you do mers human dpp4 is a mers corona virus receptor express cells only mers corona virus can get into the cells but none of the other viruses so suggesting that they, you know this our pseudo typed viruses enter through the receptor mediated endocytosis so therefore you can use this pseudo type of viruses as a neutralization assay or also you can blocking assay for the uh, the screening purpose in addition to this what we did <clears throat> we have a entry we know that the virus enter through, through the receptor mediated endocytosis what we did is we can we 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 we, we select the two you know uh, the compound that is a green tea everybody is drinking i am also drinking maybe you can see this, this is a green tea okay. and also spirulina you know? this spirulina you know, if you incubate the with the pseudo viruses you see that they could able to block the entry of the viruses pseudo either pseudo viruses or either um, the the the, the um, green tea or spirulina you know, both can incubate the entry of the so but the we actually it is known you know spirulina and green tea they have a capable of inhibiting the entry of uh, the, the 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 enveloped viruses here we tested for sars mers and sars cov2 interestingly green tea is actually is a, had a better effect than the one they incubate very efficiently we know how they do it actually this is a complicated picture you forget about it actually when you incubate the spike protein with the green tea then if you in bind the cells the bind the cells doesn't bind it here the spike cannot bind it that mean 
the green tea, the component from the green tea binding on the spike, they block the interaction of the receptor. So that's what we said is the green tea binding on the, the, the spike protein block the entry of the coronavirus. So further studies ongoing, I have to summarize now. So uh, then I'm, I'm not summarizing the dot, all the details, but I'm summarizing the my part, what I have presented here, some of them. So, you know, actually, of course, we developed, uh, successfully developed pseudotyped viruses for all coronaviruses. And we also demonstrate that coronaviruses specifically bind on the receptor and render into the host cells. If you treat them with antibody or against uh, SARS or MERS, they can block the interaction. And also soluble DPP-4 or ACE2 can block the interaction of MERS, uh, SARS as well as MERS. Uh, in addition to this, green tea, can be a, you know, green tea could be a green tea and cyclin, you know, is a, one of the nature remedy for coronavirus. That's the reason I say, you know, everybody getting coronavirus infection through now recent papers say that mouthwash, you know, you, you know, people are talking to people, it's not through the nose. Yeah, so people talking to each other, they are also getting virus infection. Could be, you know, green tea doesn't cause anything. If you drink it, you know, if the virus is binding and inhibit, doesn't matter. You can use as a mouthwash. So could be, that could be one of the remedy. We never tested, okay? There's just an experimental evidence. The important thing I want to do, because we don't have a facility like the YBSL3 facility, pseudotyped virus could be one of the a tool that can use to study the entry, entry mechanisms. And also we can do as a diagnostic neutralization assays. And also you can screen robot screening for entry inhibitors. So, but overall what we learn it actually is coronaviruses that can cross the species and also they can could be a risk for near future as well, because the coronaviruses, you know, so far nobody knows. This is the first time we, the, the, the proof the coronavirus caused pandemic. So what we needed need to prepare the future outbreaks, not only coronaviruses, any emerging viruses, or we need to do high containment facility. We need to enhance the infrastructure facility in our country. And also we need to collaborate with the clinicians and also commercial parties and government work together that is lack in our country. And also we need to better system to, you know, you know, uh, to uh, uh, antiviral, you know, designing and developing antivirals for uh, many viruses. Still, you know, we are hotspot for emerging viral, viral pathogen, especially not only Kerala. Kerala is especially we have a hotspot for emerging pathogen. So I need to uh, be prepared to tackle any of pathogens, not only coronaviruses, other viruses like you uh, have a dengue, chicken, gunya, there's a, a Japanese encephalitis, other viruses keep on coming or influenza viruses. So need to prepare it. So I need to conclude that this is, I need to thank this or the work we are doing. We are also doing a lot of work, but at this moment we want to stop it because none of them is published yet. So. We are on the way to prepare. We are studying the entry, understanding the entry mechanism of the virus, how the virus go in, and also we are trying to other stuff. So we soon we will do a next talk. I will give you a presentation. So I would like to thank you all uh, for your kind attention. So, so if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. Thank you, Dr. Stalin, for your very informative and captivating presentation. The session is now open for Q and A. Participants, please put your queries in the chat box. So we already have some questions in the chat box. Shall I read them out? Yeah, yes, please. Okay, the first question is by Sina K. Sir, since a number of animals are also carriers of coronavirus, is there any risk of disease transmission from pet animals? Yeah, <clears throat> see, so far, the, you know, we, 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 you know, okay, there are all these animals have a coronaviruses. I don't know you know or not. A pet animal dog also has a coronaviruses, and also cat also corona have a coronavirus that have a uh, their own coronavirus. So far, none of the cat or dogs corona canine doesn't transmit it to human yet. So one of the thing I mention it now because since this coronavirus, they also infecting pet animals now. You remember? So because they they also infecting cats and all. So if there is a cat, they can come recombine, they can come back later. There's a possibility that's not sure. This is, a, is a, I'm saying it's a hypothetical um, manner, but none of the animal, pet animal uh, capable of transmitting those virus to human yet. So no, so, so far no evidence yet. Okay, sir. Uh, the next question is by Anisa. 
what could be the most promising strategy to develop antiviral drugs? <laughs> so this is, <laughs> the whole world is asking the same question, what is the prominent strategy? But it's very difficult, you know, they're making drugs or therapeutics. Uh, see, we, the, the problem, what we know, you know, the 19, uh, 1918 Spanish flu came up, that time a lot of people died and they become pandemic. After that, we don't have much high, a very serious outbreak actually. Uh, 2003 SARS came in, but it is it's a disappearing. Nobody aware of this kind of pandemic came, you know, nobody even dengue coming. But the problem is nobody prepared to tackle. So for example, if I want to tell you, bacteria, bacterial disease, we know that there are people developing drug for that. No, we prepare to, 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 you know, develop. still we are facing problem for anti, uh, antibacterial, anti, uh, you know, bacterial resistant, you know, drug for. But in terms of viruses, strategy wise, there are many. You can do vaccines. That will be one, can be inhibit, pre prevent. And the second thing is the drugs can be the polymerase genes or uh, the, the, you know, some of the M bomb. Uh, M protein and, and some of the protein, accessory proteins or non-structural protein could be the, as for example, proteases. That could be the uh, one of the, the target for drug. But strategy-wise, vaccine could be the one we can prevent the virus, this outbreak. Am I right? I think I answered the right question. The question is we are not prepared yet. We are we, developing drug for immediately today. Nobody evaluated no, for uh, developing drug for viruses yet. Ah, okay, sir. Uh, the next question is by Jitasha. Is humanized camel antibody more allergic than humanized mouse antibody? So, you see, basically, this is not an allergic. So, camel antibody is only 16 kD, only fab region is we are immunizing them. Uh, you inject them in the human, but I don't think they will uh, have an uh, allergic because this virus, this antibody have a high similarity between humans. So I don't think you will have a, um, you know, the allergic. Maybe you have a little bit of immunogenicity, but still, camera, we are using human, human, have a human FC. Then it'll be you know very small proportion is we are using for the fab. So less immunogenicity, but we have not been studied yet. Okay, sir. The next question is by Lin Sita E. To what extent will the social distancing, masks, and sanitization prevent the spread of COVID-19? Okay, so the social distancing is actually, you no. Know, now see, there are so many reports. Nobody knows how exactly the virus spread, where it is spread, how distance they spread. Okay, one of the things you have to keep remember the numbers what you see in the papers may not be right. So reason I will tell you, you take a 10 people around you, now 10, 10 of them are, you know, is a, is a healthy people. 10 of them getting the virus infection. One person, they also asymptomatic, that person could be, a, you know, super spreader. That means the virus can replicate in that particular person is a very efficient then the virus load will be very high. Even there he is very close. Even when you talk or sneeze from here, they cannot see certain meter maybe the spread. And moreover, the virus who is you know, shedding more virus, that even if we, I mean, for example, I'm sitting in a room, no? If I am a super spreader, if I am spread, if I am breathing and sneezing here, the virus still can circulate here. Somebody is coming in, they can also get the virus infection. Okay? So first of all, that I'm not sure how much better keep the distance with along with the mask. That could be the one of the option, use a better mask. Second thing is mask wearing is not a problem. Mask is wear it when disposed in a proper way. And not just to wear it and just to, I'm wearing a mask. I'm, I'm seeing many people wearing a mask. They just to put them, you know, here, just not for your face. No, you have to cover all the entire nose and also you have to mouth. The now the recent report saying when you talk to you know if you stand near to one person to another if you talk then still neighbor also getting the virus infection so uh, that means through droplets. 
so better you cover entire space that would be the one sanitation is the, the sanitation is one way you can you know that's the one part the reason i am saying it for example you are you know you have a virus infection you are you know touching your face nose and all so you are giving a shake and to others or you are touching something to uh, some material for example you take a take a paper and you contaminate that paper then giving to the another person then the other person will get that then we will get the contamination that's the reason they you need to do sanitation will work you have to clean your higher hand before touching anything or giving anything including doors if you give open you are going to the some office if you you have infected then you are a no touch it you may wear a mask no you are itching on the nose you just you you know to scratch it then your hands is contaminated you are opening the office of somebody else then the, you are contaminating that person the next person who is coming and uh, opening the door he got the contam uh, the virus uh, you know it's on their hand so sanitation combination of sanitation along with uh, the, the the mask and the social distancing the only way at this moment you can control but vaccine we don't know how long it take to get the vaccine in human populations okay sir another question by anisa miss is sir the best recommended biosafety level for ebola virus is bsl4 which yeah. is the which level is recommended for corona viruses <clears throat> see so far the 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 no no except the sars mers all other corona viruses class 2 level 2 okay okay there now the this pandemic corona virus at this moment they classified as a Uh, the corona virus you know is a bsl3 pathogen is a classified and uh, bio safety level 3 okay sir the next question is by donna can spread of corona virus be contained or will the virus be prolonged in the human population and what other in vivo and in vitro system can be used for research So, pattern. This is see the in vitro system. In vitro, you need only virus, live virus. You need to do if you want any real functional studies, even virus neutralization. So, I said we can use a pseudo type to virus. Pseudo type to virus is advantage. You can work in the routine laboratory. But if you want to prove that the, whatever finding you did, for example, you you can pseudo type to viruses. You can you know you can screen huge amount of oh, drugs. you can identify few targets though target you can test them you know with the live virus of course you need the live virus uh, in the system live virus system is enough animal model also you need a bsl3 or bsl4 bsl3 plus animal facilities required to uh, study any any of the viruses i don't know this is the right i think that's the right question for, for answer for her question i think right yeah Yes, sir. Um, the next question is by Ananta Krishnan K. Is there any chance for humans to be a carrier? Which symptoms only sub? Which shows only subclinical symptoms in an individual? Okay, the see the carrier you don't know. So nobody knows. See, the problem is you know in our country especially, or I don't know many people are working. We are not doing anything systematically. But it's what. rather than doing any rt pcr and just to test you know what we did it so far in the whole country 1.3 billion people are there what we do, what did we do more than you know there are more than 70000 people died but still we never we we don't know what exactly you know do things what are the things we do we never trace back who's carrier what is the symptoms appear for the carrier we don't know we never trace back this is a systematic studies has to be done you know there are also symptoms vary but you, you have to remember one more thing this is a major problem for any respiratory viruses okay not only corona viruses in general rsv or you know influenza viruses this all symptoms we vary because somebody else i am a healthy person maybe my symptoms will be even i never aware of it any virus infection so it's another person my my friend maybe got a virus infection he maybe sneeze one time another one have a light fever this also depends on the host as well so 
there is a no specific marker at this moment uh, we also seeing a lot of papers many people are asymptomatic even now they uh, the every day we are here you know the news F fm the actually cm news we see them uh, how many people are contact there is a 4000 people or 3000 every day 3000 4000 people are see those are contact people we then each one if you ask to whom you contact we don't know where it is coming because they don't have a symptoms for other person so what are the symptoms he had it he because see for example you one time if you sneeze it you never you think it was a serious no maybe there is a virus infection you sneeze it once then you you never consider some you got some virus infection that's a problem we don't have any specific mark at this moment who is he? only if you have a symptoms like a throat pain and also you have a fever and uh, then they have a consideration of some kind of symptoms that's the reason the doctors also giving a testing for this at this moment but doesn't mean it the only corona virus can this is the fever that no you also getting other viral infection other factors as well that's a problem so no specific marker no specific borderline for this yep. okay sir the next question question is by ranju shamis so is there any chance for the viruses to get genetically altered while spreading yes of course <clears throat> the virus not only this viruses all these rna viruses for example influenza viruses or rsv we we uh, the rsv these all viruses can alter while replication because i told you no because they don't have a proofreading activity they can mutate it there are one way the genetic changes happen we passing it one of the slides also say i showed you lot of evolutionarily already there's a backbone is here the virus evolved now lot of clusters if you see them in india there's a two clusters or three clusters actually in kerala this kerala itself we have a two clusters actually this is evolutionarily they you know they evolved the reason is if they one person to if the virus jump to another person then they move very rapidly they can also spread, they also genetically change 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 they go on one way the second way i told you the recombination i told you, you know the recombination in fact if you two virus infected in same for example no need to worry about it we one example is i, I would say there's a corona virus i said two clade no two clade is one is for example in trandrum another one is from ernakulam there's a two clade of virus circulating so one person from the uh, the trandrum person is going to ernakulam the same person getting the virus infection from the same you know from the ernakulam strain then that that means the two virus can again recombine to come back in the another version as well okay this is a problem in the corona viruses corona virus a large genome they can also recombine they can also get mutated okay there are the possibilities okay sir the next question by anisa miss is so we need large volumes of viruses for studies will it be possible with pseudo type viruses uh that's a very good question pseudo type of virus as a production is very very tough <laughs> you know the titer will be very less we always produce 10 liters 5 liters you will produce then we concentrate the virus you know by like like a concentrator then we produce a concentrated virus to enough material to do the studies but of course a live virus will be there because a live virus will get a high titer that is the best option but we know we cannot if you don't have we have always we need to find alternative option so we found it only when it's a pseudo typed virus is a better better choice than any other because nothing you know we don't have anything we have to simply sit it so i don't think we you know getting a bsl3 facility i don't know south india also we don't have it other than iisc bangalore so we don't have a facility so we anyway we have to move on so pseudo virus we need to adjust with the pseudo typed virus at this moment of course we need a large volume we, we need to find a way The next question is by Fabi Miss. Sir, if a person gets sick with COVID-19, could he infect his animals or pets with the virus? And what could be the symptoms shown by an infected animal? It's a very good question. We don't know. That's what I said. It. So uh, these are maybe get the animal may maybe they generate symptoms like human. Sometimes may not. We don't know. You so you know the SARS during the SARS outbreak actually. uh there is a sars outbreak happening in the zoo uh, from thailand there are you know there are few 
um, is a cat actually is a tiger died because uh, you know died then they the news came up when in the zoo zara some of the tiger died when they test them they were coronavirus positive sars cov positive so maybe they generate symptoms maybe may not be you know we may be this is very complicated question we don't know yet The next question is by Durga. When COVID first emerged, what were the first steps to study this virus? What was the struggle? In what ways were we able to study this virus? See, basically, if you talk about in India, struggle is for everything. Okay, struggle is. You need first of all, you need money. The huge amount of money for research. You need a proper facility. You need it. Second thing. money facility these are without the two things you need to do it for any research if you don't have it you cannot do it okay the proper then of course you need a material samples and the materials everything you need it so another example is you ask hurdle um, i need is uh, you know i was working on coronavirus i sent an email to one of the big institute in india so i said i am i am i specialized in coronavirus there is a coronavirus outbreak is ongoing why can i can collaborate with in your institute and blah blah so i never got re- response till date they they started long back ago i wrote them this are the hurdles no we don't get materials you do cannot work with the other people you everything is struggle if you ask from a to z is our struggle nothing will be get you know you you everything is to struggle The last question is by Krishna Prasad R. How far uh, the genetic variation of the coronavirus can worsen or better the pr- present situation? Again, this is a this all you are asking complicated. But so evolutionarily we can predict. But see, this is <clears throat> earlier they have a limitation. Okay, so but now we are beyond the limitation. The number of time passing is going up, up, up again. so but we don't know i i for me if you ask i don't know exactly how much you see going to see the evolutionarily i don't know exactly because i'm not doing that i am not studied about that how in corona virus going to happen yet you know in the near future i don't know okay sir mm-hmm. uh, we have some queries from the live stream as well uh, mm-hmm. priyamis please Sir, we have some questions in the live streaming also. Shall we move yeah. to it, sir? Yeah, yes, please. The first question is asked by B4 Biotech. Which type of mutation is mainly seen in COVID-19? Hello, can you repeat? I can't hear. Oh, voice is breaking. Which which type is which type of mutation is mainly seen in COVID-19? which type of mutations yes sir are uh, you mean types means yeah we we could see lot of substitutions there some only type of mutation we see so a specific see is a the mutations variation actually one of the mutation if you are specifically if you ask there are you know of course in in rna viruses you will get mutation randomly everywhere okay major mutation one of the mutation in the spike one there's a r to d mutation i think if i if i think it one of the mutation people are talking about it another mutation we, we you know we will usually look mutation in the spike where the receptor binding site is happening one second the mutation we always look where the the drug targeting region as mpro or polymerase third one is in nucleic capsid proteins and other uh, non structural protein so this is uh, randomly happening but you know in the in in, in some specific position also available okay sir the second question is by saugat pol how long virus survive and multiply in the environment okay so 
you know that is actually again i miss usually sometimes my basic question i will answer it but in this, in this presentation i didn't do it so viruses are non living organisms okay the viruses if you are nested to you the virus is dead body they cannot do anything on their own they cannot replicate they cannot produce their, they cannot eat their food on anything as long as they are just nested to you there is a not pathogenic so is the so once the virus attached to your body tissues or when it get into the cells then only the problem the virus utilize your host machinery they start replicate say they all always dependent on your host okay on host not like a, the bacteria bacteria can produce replicate on their own they can also uh, you know make their food on their own bacteria or fungus yeast whatever it is but viruses they cannot replicate and they are one they always depend on the host okay okay sir okay so the third question by sakina asked me uh, recently studies shown that heparin sulfate has a role in helping the virus to bind to the ace receptor uh, yep. can you provide some information about that see <clears throat> one of the things, of course this is we are also working on it so some of the thing so uh, see viruses uh, it doesn't mean it only using one type of receptor okay they use multiple receptors so one of them is heparin sulfate heparin sulfate is also similar you know dengue viruses are using heparin sulfate okay this could be a co receptor they are interacting with that so beyond that in the heparin sulfate part i don't have any much explanation for that okay sir another question is by meera mohandas Hmm. now there are sanitizers claiming that they can protect us up to 7 days from viruses by applying on our body is this true <laughs> again of course you see don't ask me me kind of this complicated question i cannot recommend anything for this because if unless until if you don't yeah, have any experimental evidence we cannot say yes or no answer for me so this is is complicated in the health related and uh, this uh, experimentally we need a lot of proof we need that sanitizer is protecting that you need a proper experiment okay the, the reason i am asking similar question many people develop mask and many things they also asking to me can you test them with your pseudo typed viruses your viruses whether it is uh, it is as a protect or not because with the existing facility we cannot control we cannot test them so therefore for me no no evidence and uh, nobody shown that this is having protection this many they, i don't see anything okay, we need a public you know, that, that means it's a scientific publication okay scientifically if somebody prove that they have to come as a publication that we are uh, that that means it's a peer reviewed then only we look we usually as accept uh, thing okay sir and the question by nikita biju mm -hmm. how are the symptoms of novel corona virus different from those associated with a typical common cold and seasonal flu and why does sars cov 2 appear to spread more rapidly than sars cov or mers cov yes <clears throat> see one thing is this i i told you i don't know this virus is is a strange is a strange virus uh, other than the influenza virus this virus transmit very very efficiently between humans um the reason again i will tell you we don't know but one thing i can give you suggestion i told you earlier also this virus replicate very well in the upper respiratory tract okay so one could be and the recent report saying this virus also escape from the our immune system that means that mean uh, in the front pathways the virus can escape if the virus escape from our body then our our body cannot recognize there is some pathogen in the in the body then the virus you know they can produce more more then if you have more virus in your nose what will happen is the sneezing or even you, uh, you are talking or you are the virus transmission will be very high uh, but the cohort studies the in, in terms of transmission not been studied but one of the paper i saw them recently a paper reviewed paper or not the uh, one of the studies in the fly, flight no then they in the somebody is traveled around 60 percentage of them is 60 or 70 percentage of them traveled in the flight who uh, you know they got um, uh, they infected because many of them are uh, you know before getting the flight 
they don't have a virus infection but when you coming back from the flight then they have a, a virus infection that that means through that they they they, they around 60 to 70 percentage of them got infected but the problem is we know again this this is <clears throat> because the, you cannot randomly answer questions the, the thing is we are not sure the 60 percent of them got infected whether they wear a mask who of them who carry the virus the one who carry the virus maybe they initially they got the you know the asymptomatic or they he had a symptoms he did the paracetamol then he came into them we don't know who transmitted how many of them have the virus this all is a still complicated question unanswered question now um, we don't know 70 percentage there is a mark they put it but we don't know yet how okay so the last question is by neetu b Mm. Can you explain to what extent the convalescent plasma therapy is effective against covid-19 See conval <clears throat> sorry the convalescent plasma would be you know for me one of the option uh, to do you know that could be the one of the option but sometimes we also i hear that there's some reaction also will be there but it's a better the issue is because convalescent plasma have a polyclonal antibody that can target you know even one and one it's so um, one antibody doesn't protect it. the other you know antibody can uh, neutralize it that's one of the way you can use it the question is if you plasma therapy alone will help or better you can do a purify the antibody then if you <clears throat> if you treat them then maybe better the convalescent plasma you will use to for now <clears throat> now we are using for coronavirus so early days you know rabies virus rabies you know once you get the bite rabbit bite then if you if you doesn't vaccine if you know if you not vaccinated then the virus will be spread very it be in the in a human in <clears throat> spread in your tissue so only the, the people use convalescent sera to treat them so but here convalescent is better option but how i think I, there are a lot of people are doing research on it there are this a better I, i would say is a better better way we can protect but the question is how many people you collect samples you know get you need to get the proper uh, the, the, um, uh, testing the you the the one you are collecting from have a high titer of antibodies then you have to get it but this will be do you think it this will help for the entire globe that's a problem okay sir thank you so much sir thank you so much I believe that our speaker has cleared almost all the queries. Dr. Stalin, would you like to share anything more? Yeah, no. I think I think I covered because I bit due to the time I did them little bit less but you know only thing is I want to tell you everybody be be careful wear a mask social distancing is very important because we are not aware of the seriousness of the disease. Not only we and their people glow because we once we face problem that time only we will <clears throat> realize the value um the what we are facing currently is you know if you don't have a symptoms not a problem but you talk to your grandpa or grandma or somebody else you transmit into other person that you have to be keep remember the problem again is lack of or limited availability of facilities in our country even if you have a, if you have a sick you have to take them into the icu you know you need a hospital facility many people go they don't have a facility even mumbai i heard that lot of people died because of you know in your icu you know ventilator you need to reserve keep people are on the wait you need to wait so better you know be careful you know that is the only thing i would say you need to don't spread to others everybody if you wear a mask and if you you maintain the social distancing i think definitely uh we will win the game i think kerala is the one where if we have a better control than any other places until now i think so but still now in kerala is now the number of cases is going up so please be stay at home and maintain the social distancing okay thank you thank you for the attention if you have any queries or anything you can contact my by landline number if you browse it my office number is there i didn't put it here so or you can email me thank you sir
Dear attendees, please note that there are two feedback forms in the chat box. Make sure both the forms are acknowledged and filled carefully. Now it's time for the validatory function. I now invite Srimati Jitasha Balan to take over the formal function. Good morning, all of you. Our team went an extra mile and worked their tail off to make this dream of webinar series a reality. Above and beyond, let us not forget the inspiration and encouragement given by Sri K. Anand, Managing Director of Sri Shankara College Kaledi, and Sri C. P. J. Shankar, Chief Operations Officer, Adi Shankara Group of Institution, who is a visionary and driving spirit for conducting this great webinar series. The sale for this venture was guided by Dr. Preeti Nair, IQAC coordinator, a great motivator to all of us. On behalf of the organizing committee, I am very glad to welcome Sri C.P. Jayashankar sir and our principal Dr. A. Suresh sir onto this webinar's validatory function. Then I extend a delightful welcome to Dr. V. Stalin Dutch, Dr. Preeti Nair, and to my fellow faculty members and all the participants to this function. Now I invite Sri C.P. Jayashankar sir for the special address. Sir, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's very commendable that the Department of Biosciences has successfully concluded an international webinar on surviving the pandemic. I must say that uh, the thrust areas were very well chosen. Evolution of the virus and disease management, post-traumatic stress disorder, neutralizing antibodies, developments in diagnostics in the global control of COVID-19, and the vaccines being developed. And these talks were delivered by uh, international experts. We had Dr. Mohan Isaac, a visiting professor of psychiatry from the University of Western Australia. There was Dr. Unikishan Shivan, a postdoctoral researcher from the University of Oxford. Dr. Kadreshan Nadeshan, senior research fellow at Mayo Clinic, the US. Dr. Padma Priya Banada from New Jersey Medical School. And of course, Dr. Stalin Raj from Isaac Trivandrum, who spoke a while back. I was really happy to see the, the Q&A session. Um, it shows the kind of interest that the talk has generated. And I'm very sure that these discussions have lent clarity to the multiple dimensions in tackling the pandemic and in the process would have provided an assurance that modern medicine will effectively challenge and overcome this tough situation. My congratulations to the Department of Biosciences, to the HODN coordinator, Ms. Tudasha Balan, and the team. Dr. Preeti Nair, coordinator of IQAC. Uh, they've always been in the forefront of conducting seminars and workshops of relevance. Congratulations and best wishes to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. Now I invite Mrs. Sina Kuribila for the vote of thanks. Assistant <laughs> Principal Karee Suresh, Chief Operations Officer Jay Shangas, sir, IQAC coordinator Dr. Preeti Nair, Today's speaker, Dr. V. Stanley Dash, other delegates, and my dear colleagues. It's my pleasure to be present here to express our sincere gratitude on behalf of the management, staff, and the organizers of the webinar to Dr. V. Stanley Dash, Associate Professor Isaac Truandrup. I honestly commend that today's talk on discovery and functional characterization of novel coronavirus was very informative and enriching. I am definitely sure that all the participants of the webinar must have gained much from the talk by this renowned scholar. I submit that we are very privileged to receive Dr. V. Stanley Dutch for today's presentation, and I take up this opportunity to express our deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Stanley Dutch for his excellent talk. Since we have reached the concluding part of the entire webinar series entitled Surviving a Pandemic, a Disease Tolerance Perspective, I am therefore duty bound to propose the word of thanks to all those who had contributed towards the success of the webinar series. To begin with, I, on behalf of the Department of Biosciences, express my thanks to our Managing Director, Anand Sir, and Chief Operations Officer, Jayashankar Sir, whose benevolence has essentially helped in incorporating this webinar series in the smart scheme of IQSC for accomplishment of academic excellence of this institution. The encouragement received throughout this webinar series from our principal, Dr. A. Suresh, was the main source of our inspiration for conducting this webinar. And I take up this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to Suresh sir. The success of this webinar series is mainly attributed to all the speakers, namely Dr. Mohan Isaac, Dr. Unikrishnan Shivan, Dr. Kadineshan Nadarajan, Dr. Padma Priya B. Benada, and also today's speaker, Dr. V. Stalin Dash, whose scholarly talks and presentation has really enriched the series. 
I express my gratitude to all the speakers for this webinar, for the webinar Biogen 2020. The support of the IQSC coordinator, Dr. Preeti Naya, and the technical support given by Assistant Professor Sri Prasad. and we are also very glad to receive national and international personalities as participants of the webinar. I express my thanks to all the participants for making this program a grand success. Thank you all once again and have a nice day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, we once again remind you all to fill up the feedback forms as early as possible before leaving. The link will be active only for one hour after the session. Since we have more than 400 registered participants, it will take more than one week for the generation of the certificates. Once it's done, the certificates of the webinar will be issued to the registered email IDs of the participants. It's time to wind up. Thank you for being such an amazing and great audience and supporting us with your cooperation. I hope that each and every one of you enjoyed the webinars. Looking forward to seeing you all the next time. Thank you all and have a great day ahead.